first objective, you will be able to use local linearity to approximate the slope of a function at a point. And now that terminology there, local linearity, we haven't formally defined it just yet, but perhaps it's self-evident. Or if it's not, maybe the picture itself can help you figure out what it means. So take a look. We've got a magnifying glass, and it is trained on a portion of the graph that looks like y equals sine x, right? And uh, the picture in the magnifying glass looks like a straight line, like it's linear. And this calls to mind that opening activity, that warm-up activity. And in that warm-up warm activity, I, uh, I tricked you. I gave you a graph that looked like y equals x, but it turned out it was y equals sine x. And what that meant was the graph of y equals sine x looks approximately like or really, really close to y equals x as we are really super close to the origin. This is a principle that is called local linearity. All right, so let's write something down for local linearity. It simply means that most functions can be approximated by a line over some small interval. And notice that there is a little footnote there about most functions. Which functions are we talking about? Not every single one? No. So specifically, the functions that we're talking about here for local linearity are ones that are differentiable. And this word differentiable, this is going to come up in our next unit. It has to do with this concept, part of calculus that's called a derivative, being able to take the derivative of a function. And the idea of differentiability and taking a derivative is tied to local linearity and slope. So speaking of slope, let's find the slope of this graph on example one. Now, I'm not trying to trick you this time. What you see is what you get. It looks like a line. It truly is a line. All right, so let me, uh, why don't you go ahead and pause the the video and see if you can quickly estimate the slope of that line. All right, what'd you come up with? Let's see. I'm going to do the same kind of thing. It seems uh, appropriate to do this in red here. Oh, yeah, and so just so I can show you, I can tap on this in button. It's not going to change. It's, it is the graph of a line. Okay. So it looks like if I come up here, whoops, where'd my pen go? It's right there and right here. That looks like it's two. This looks like it's one, right? Ooh, really zoomed in there. So that means that the slope looks like it is, here, let me put approximately two. So speaking of slope, let's take a moment and let's go back in time to whenever it was that you took algebra 8th grade, 7th grade, ninth grade, whenever it was, let's review some stuff about slope. I'm going to come down here to roughly a clean sheet. Slope. So what comes to mind when somebody says the slope? Well, usually when we're talking about slope, we're talking about lines here, right? It's linear. Slope is associated with a linear thing. And uh, let's see. We use... We use a, a particular letter for that, right? It's like M. M for slope. It goes in the slope, uh, like the slope-intercept form of a line as M, and it has a little formula, and that formula is sometimes written in words as rise over run, right? Or perhaps a delta Y over delta X. And delta just means change in, so it's a, a Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Do you remember, do you remember learning this stuff in, in algebra and thinking, man, this stuff is, man, this is really complex? Probably not, because slope is so easy. And believe it or not, that's what the whole first part of calculus is all about. It's about slope. Well, actually, first part's about limits, and then we start talking about slope. So let's say I have myself a line here. Yep. And then uh, let's label this stuff on here. Let's see. Maybe I, I choose a red. So slope as rise over run. I'm going to make a little right triangle here. Because the vertical part here, this is my rise. And the horizontal part, of course, is my run. Uh, or, alternatively, I could call that my delta y and my delta x. 
All right, so something else that is associated with slope and this idea, it is a number, right? And for a particular line, it's always the same number. It is constant. The slope of a line is always constant. It never ever changes. Have you ever have you ever asked yourself why it doesn't change or did you just accept it? I know your teacher probably told you at some point the slope of a line is always the same. It doesn't matter which two points that you pick. It doesn't matter what order they come in as long as you keep it the same, right? Well, why is that true? Why is it that the slope of a line is constant? So let me clue you in here. So notice that we do have ourselves a right triangle here. Now let's make this. I'm going to go ahead and color it in. And the slope of the line there would be this change in y over change in x that I already wrote down. It would be that ratio. And let's say, for example, that I pick two other points. I'm going to label these two points. This one's an A and this one's a B. Let's say I pick a third point. I'll make another color. Purple. We'll call it C. And I'm going to go from A to C, and I'm going to calculate the slope from A to C. Well, it should also trace out a right triangle. I'll go from A to C, right? And then I don't have the exact same delta Y and the exact same delta X, so I'll call them something else. I'll call this one, say, an A, whatever that number is, and I'll call that horizontal portion, the run, we'll call that one B. Okay, so the slope between A and C now is A over B. So the question is, hey, what's the relationship between A over B and delta Y over delta X from the original triangle? And they are the same. Why are they the same? We'll take a look at the triangles that we have here. We have two right triangles, and they share this angle over here at A, they also have right angles. These two nested right triangles are similar. And whenever you have similar triangles or similar shapes in general, their sides are proportional. What's it mean for their sides to be proportional? It means that they have the exact same ratio which means that the ratio of A to B is the same thing as it is from delta Y over delta X. This is the reason why the slope of a line is always constant, and it doesn't matter which points that you select in order to find the slope of that particular line. Okay, well, that's easy enough. Man, calculus is going to be a breeze if that's all it was. It's not. Okay, anyway, so let's look at example two. Let's find the slope of this graph. Hmm. That looks like a parabola. All right, so I do have a problem here. Let's go back over because uh, I do have a picture I could write on. Uh, we already talked about, when we talked about slope and recapped things about slope, we said it was associated with lines and stuff. This is definitely not a line. As a matter of fact, if I try to do that same kind of activity here, let me zoom in on this. Maybe even change the size of this in tiny dots. Okay. Let's say I pick these two points on the parabola, and then I draw a line between those two line, those two points, okay? And uh, remember, for a line, for any line, if I pick, it doesn't matter which points that I pick, I will always get the exact same slope. Uh, this time, let me pick a third point out here, and then go from, say, that origin point to this one. All right. So visually, we could definitely see, man, it's unfortunate that I picked that green color. Why did I pick green? You can barely even see that. Let's say I pick red. Maybe that's a little easier to see. All right, so now we can definitely visualize the fact that the slopes between these two lines are not the same. So this is not a question that we can answer. Find the slope of this graph. It's not a number. It's not a particular number. It is something that is variable, is constantly changing. And that idea, that thing, as we will see in the next unit, is called a derivative. Okay, so this thing has a variable slope. The slope of a nonlinear function is not constant. What that means is that it could be different at any particular point. It's controlled by a function. That function is called a derivative. So we're going to see also in the coming lessons that finding the slope at any particular point on 
this graph, say maybe right there, is the same thing as finding the slope of a tangent line at that particular point. So you might think, like, we first saw that word tangent back in geometry, and it comes from a Latin word that means uh, touching, tangents, as you can see over there. All right, so in the next video, we're going we're gonna to look at the idea of a tangent line in a little bit more detail.